years ago on a trip to Vienna, Austria, shortly after getting married, I had the opportunity to visit Heldenplatz Square. And anyone who visits Vienna probably encounters this massive square at the center of the city. It's really impossible to miss. And while today this is a popular site in the city for tourists to visit in March of 1938, it was actually the location of Hitler's formal announcement of the Anschluss, the annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany. It was a speech that took place in front of thousands upon thousands of people. It was really one of Hitler's more famous addresses. And here I found myself standing about 75 years later on a trip with my wife. And standing in that spot, we looked around and we realized that the sun was setting. We needed to daven mincha. And while I have daven mincha in many inspiring locations before, this mincha that we davened and held in plots was perhaps one of the most memorable of my life. And it was memorable because it produced a very strong and unique sense of kavana. The sense of kavana, a focus on our, on our tefillot, which emerged from being in a place where so many of our ancestors' fates were sealed, where so many cheered on and lended their support to the horrors that the Nazis were perpetrating. And there we stood, 85 years later, alive and well, newly married, thank God, overwhelmed, of course, with sadness for what was lost during the Shoah, but also full of pride and gratitude for the Jewish people's survival. And despite all of the horrors of the Shoah, we were still standing. And Hitler, who must, at the time of this speech in March of 1938, must have seemed so invincible, we were standing in this very square where he spoke privileged to be davening. And he, Hitler, was not. This transition from darkness to light, me'afela le'ora, is noted in a very subtle way at the start of this week's Parsha, Tazria. Uh, this week, we'll read Tazria Metzora, and it begins with a description of what a woman must do after giving birth to a male child. It describes the offerings she must bring and the days she must remain tmea. And upon closer inspection, one finds a short pasuk, a very short verse, that even seems a little bit out of place. The Torah tells us, after her seven-day period of waiting, of being in her state of Tuma, it's yimol besar orlarto. On the eighth day, the flesh of the baby's foreskin, meaning the, the baby should be circumcised. On the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. He gets a bris. Now, what is this Pasuk doing here? Why are we being informed again of the mitzvah of Brit Milah, the commandment to circumcise baby boys on the eighth day of life? Haven't we already learned about this earlier in the Torah? I'd like to suggest that this Pasuk is actually in conversation with the start of last week's Parsha, Parshat Shmini, which also began Shmini with the description of an eighth day. The eighth day that was described in the beginning of last week's Parsha was the celebration of the dedication and the consecration of the Mishkan. And as we read last week, this celebration was tainted by the tragic death of Aharon's sons, Nadab and Avihu, who offered a fire to Hashem that they were not supposed to. The incredible joy, the promise of the eighth day was reversed into unspeakable sorrow and pain for Aharon and really for all of the Jewish people. And read within this context, our pasuk, which describes the birth of a male baby and his bris on the eighth day, serves as a very powerful reminder, despite the trauma that the Jewish people had experienced and no doubt internalized after the death of Aharon's sons, there will still be a future where Jewish babies are born. Not only will they be born, but we will be joyous again, celebrating their bris on the eighth day. This eighth day, which in last week's Parsha was a point of pain, is transformed in this week's Parsha into the eighth day as a point of pride. And this is precisely the feeling that we felt while standing in Heldenplatz davening Mencha. The source of our people's pain became a source of comfort and pride. As we mark the transition from this week where we commemorated Yom HaShoah to the days next week when we're going to commemorate Yom HaZikaron and then celebrate Yom HaTzma'ut, we really have an opportunity to reflect on this important theme. We can, we must continue to remember our pain, and we can also draw inspiration from where the Jewish people stand today. Thank God, alive and well. Shabbat Shalom.